Hey, babes. We live. It's Tuesday. It's 7 o'clock. And we live. Oh, my gosh. So exciting. Oh, Tuesday's best day ever. Come on in. Y'all already know the deal. Let me know your name, where you're checking in from, and what you're working on tonight. This is Tony of Teal Yarn Crafts. Thanks so much for joining me live. As always, I am so excited for tonight. If you guys checked my stories, you already know why today is a super huge deal. Like, super, 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 super huge deal. Um, we're going to have a guest on in about 15 minutes or so. Hi, Mom. Finally caught me live. Whoop, whoop. Yes, if you are checking in for the very first time live, let me know. Over the weekend, I had like this really big influx of new friends. So if you're checking in live for the first time, throw up some hearts. Let me know. So Gabby from the Bay working on hugs and kisses blanket. Ooh, what's that? Tell me about that. I want to know about that. That sounds fun. Brianna from Salem <laughs> making loaded mashed potatoes. And girl, you're going to make me a plate. You know how I feel about potatoes. Last night, I made um, salmon, asparagus, and like these little blistered potatoes. So good. I just, potatoes just make me feel good. Like who, who doesn't love potatoes? Monica from Oakland, between projects. Well, you've come to the right place, darling. I'm going to be talking about some new projects that you're probably going to want to pick up mm, tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be huge too, but tonight is huge first. Lisa from Southern Maryland making a granny stripe blanket. Oh my gosh, I love granny stripes. Have you guys seen that blanket make and do crew made? It was a granny stripe blanket made out of, I think, Lion Brand Heartland. And I haven't worked with Heartland yet, but the colors that she picked for that blanket were just magnificent like everything that comes out of jess's camp is just like fire amazing i love it it's all so good she just made um i think she just released either yesterday or friday this new cardigan which i just it's just so singing cute uh let's see making a seed stitch crochet wrap hoping it'll look like a mexican blanket when finished Ooh, that sounds pretty just watch a yard for the flat iron shop so exciting oh my gosh i just screenshotted like a couple other people that said that they were starting their flat iron shawls like you guys still you don't don't even understand how excited i get when i hear people are working on the flat iron shawl because even just this past weekend i was at home visiting family and i went to local yarn store day which is an event and i'm going to tell you about but there were a couple like super duper sweet ladies and like me and the owner of the shop were just going around because they said they wanted to make their flat irons and we were picking out yarns and like helping people pick out yarns for their flat irons is like so gratifying and it just feels so good because i get to really experience people's personalities especially their yarning personalities and like what colors they like to work with and if they're going with speckles or variegated or like there was even one girl who picked up a self-striping and i'm like that's gonna be gorgeous so pretty still working on yours awesome anybody else made a flat iron shawl i'm like seriously considering making another one even though i have like ideas for like six more shawls so question i know that you guys love the flat iron shawl but like how do we feel about shawls overall right so the flat iron is super fun because it's huge and it kind of looks knitted and it uses like the whole fading thing which is really popular right now um how did you pick the name flat iron shawl Ooh, i'm happy to explain that but yeah let me know in the comments like how you guys feel about shawls overall like was there something special about the flat iron shawl that you especially liked or like do you just like shawls in general are you like totally cool with that so the flat iron shawl um, i actually did a blog post about it because it is a very special name like it it came from something very special um so can i take you back over the the course of time with the flat iron um i had picked up the yarn when my mother and i who she had come down to visit and we went to a fiber festival together and there were these three shades of orange speckled yarn right next to each other and it was like tweedy and it was fabulous so i just picked up all three of them and i was like i'm gonna do something with this i don't know what that's just typically how my life works i just find stuff that i like and i grab it it had been sitting in my stash for a while i finally wound it into cakes and i was like oh now i definitely got to do something with it uh i found a fun idea on pinterest and i kind of like edited and played with it and used that as my inspiration and I started this project but I wasn't in love with it like it didn't have any meaning for me it didn't it didn't feel like anything I see shawls are life I see I love shawls okay well that's good to know especially for crocheters I know knitters absolutely love shawls because they got like a million and one choices but just wanted to make sure that we can still go in that vein and be cool <laughs> um so I wasn't in love with the project it didn't have a name it didn't have an idea it wasn't going anywhere um and then I went on my New York trip so I went to New York back in January and it was like super inspirational because I got to meet a lot of my Instagram friends on 
this trip between a lion brand event and going to Vogue Knitting Live and there was like a, a love knitting event and it was just huge. It was super duper fun. Um, so I got inspired by that trip and of course the Flatiron building is in New York and I love the shape of that building, always have and it's so fun and, and that building itself has a lot of really rich history. Um, so then I use that as the name of my shawl to always remind me and anyone who bothers remembering that that shawl was re-inspired by that trip to New York. So it was super duper exciting and yeah, that's where it came from. Um, so before I get Alex on, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on what we're doing tonight. So tonight is the last Tuesday of the month. At the last Tuesday of the month, we always do an Ask Me Anything. Super open-ended. Whatever questions you have, if you peep my stories you saw. Oh my gosh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> um, if you peep my stories you saw that an Ask Me Anything is basically like anything. Any topic that you're interested in knowing more about. Anything that I could maybe impart some wisdom on or that we can all work through together. Just throw those questions out there and let me know. Um, the only thing off limits for an Ask Me Anything, of course, is like pattern support. Because <laughs> I've had those questions before come up in my Ask Me Anything. And like, if you've got pattern support, like, just shoot me an email. That's cool. Um, so... If you've got questions, hold on to them for a second. <laughs> My husband's like, uh-oh, ask me anything. Um, real quick shout out before I get too far into things. Um, as you guys already know, or anybody who doesn't know already, I'll let you know. My husband has a podcast. It's called Thinking Out Loud. And pretty much every Tuesday before I come on live with you guys, I like shake the cobwebs out by being on his podcast first. So we had a really, really great episode tonight. Myself, our friend Shanae, and then my husband was on. And the main topic was about, um, like, relationships, particularly in the black community and how we address each other, like talking about black goddesses and gods and queens and kings and all that stuff, like lots of different, lots of different emotions and things like that came up. So if you're interested in knowing my take on just kind of the language that we use within relationships as people of color, you might be interested in checking that out. So you can go to tolpodcast.com to find that episode um, as well as all of the past episodes. You can also find the episodes on my husband's Facebook page under Janan Lipsy. So he's super fun. Um, so wow, you're beautiful. Who do you look like? I look like my mom. And my mom is the one who encouraged me to like pick out all of my curls. So that's how I have all of this volume on my head right now. And it's making me so happy. It's like a really great hair day. I got my hair done on Wednesday of last week and I wasn't in love with it. And then I got some product and I got some, I got a pick and I like went to town and now I'm happy with it. It shaped out like real cute. Um, so yeah. So yeah, check out tolpodcast.com and go watch all of the podcasts. So quick update about this past weekend. I went home to visit my family who are up in Michigan for local yarn store day. I was grateful to be one of three makers chosen by a shop called The Yarn Stop to come in and basically be their crochet designer of the day, which is really exciting. Um... Yeah, we're going to have to hang out again when we come when I come back to New York, for sure. I'm going to find you. Um, so, Local Yarn Store Day was awesome. So, I was able to teach a class. I taught my Mega Palm Beanie class. There were like 11 people, which was really exciting. The place was packed. Hi, from Oz. Hey, is it Lissy Lou Australia? Oh, my gosh. What time is it in Australia right now? I don't even know. Oh, my gosh. Is it like super early or super late? Would it be like super late? Early. I don't know. Let me know. Um, <laughs> so that was super fun. I got to teach a class. I made a whole bunch of samples for that event. So I made like another Astrid Ruana. I made a flat iron shawl. I made a free yourself shawl and I made a mega palm beanie for that event. Sold some patterns, bought some yarn. I wanted to show you guys the yarn that I bought. Now I was really, really good. And by really good, it was, I was good because I had to be because this yarn was like really expensive and a girl ain't swinging like that no more unless I like have a specific project in mind unless it's like something from Joanne's in all honesty uh it's 9 10 a.m oh that's not so bad that's not so bad are you like sneaking watching this at work because that always makes me happy when people do that um hello 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 it was great to meet you oh, of course oh my gosh you guys are so sweet thank you um so that was like a super fun event. So I got two yarns that are like really special to me. I had to get these and I'll tell you why. So the first one is from Alexandra's Crafts. It's this speckly, turquoise, rust, mustard, aqua, 
purple yumminess. So this yarn is from Alexandra's Crafts. She is based out of Silverton, Oregon. You can find her online at alexandrascrafts.com. So I had to get this yarn because this yarn was dyed specifically by Alexandra because of local yarn store day. So local yarn store day had a logo with all of these pretty colors in it. So she made a whole, like I think a hundred skeins of yarn in this colorway specifically for this shop for local yarn day. So I was like, I have to get it. Mm. And it feels so good, so good, so good. So it, it's Superwash Merino Tinsel, which I'm not 100% sure what that is, in nylon. So it's going to have the strength, but it's also super soft. Loving my shirt. It's so sweet. This is like my favorite shirt. I am a tunic queen. I love tunics. And this is like my favorite because it looks like it's covered in palm leaves. So I had to get this. Super exciting. So this is going in my stash. I have no plans for it, like zero plans for it. Um... But I thought it was really pretty and I had to get it to commemorate the day that I was part of Local Yarn Store Day. And then, at the same day, I met another dyer. His name is Richard DeVries. He is based out of Toronto and he is super amazing. Alex says he's running home. Okay, you don't have to run. It's okay. We, we got time. It's cool, Alex. Take your time. Don't hurt yourself. Um, so, Richard DeVries was, he's a dyer based out of Toronto and he was actually at the event had a whole bunch of his yarn. So I had to get this one. This is his Superwash Merino, and this color is called Mardi Gras. Now I got this color because I think I've mentioned before that I'm going to Miami in July with my best friend for a trip. That's why I'm missing our maker life. But I had to get this because for some reason this reminded me of like 90s Miami. Like it's this, it's the whole thing is a little bit washed out, which I love. Like, I love a good bold color like these, but I love that this whole thing is a little bit washed out. We don't have many dyers here in Australia. Oh, no. If you email the girls at um, Fibershare, I bet you they can put you in touch with some really good dyers. Because I know they had some dyers from Australia in their list of people to buy yarn from during Fibershare. So they, they might be a good people good people to check out. Um, looks great. Great colors, but they're neutral. Yeah, so they're, they're like super chilled out. So it's got like a coral back here. And then this has a little bit of like a really pretty... Like for some reason, this reminds me of like a toucan. Like those really colorful birds. And I associate those with tropical places and I know Miami's not really tropical but I've also never been there and I've never been to the tropics so I associate two cans with Miami whatever that's not the point um but it's got this pretty green it's got like yellow like it's a whole 1990s Miami rainbow and I love it and look how pretty it looks next to my face so I don't know what I'm gonna make it'll probably be a shawl because like when I when I see fingering weight yarn all I think is shawls because I don't really make sweaters and I would not want to make, I would not want to crochet a sweater out of fingering weight yarn. I tell you that much. That might be the one thing that you never see come out of TL Yarn Crafts is a fingering weight sweater. I'll tell you that much. It does look very pretty. Oh, thank you. I love it. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss any comments. Um, I think I'm all caught up. Love the colors. The great neutrals. We don't have any dyers in Australia. I mentioned that. Okay, cool. So we're all caught up. So so these are the two yarns that I got when I went to go visit my family this past weekend, which was super fun. And I know it was like radio silence from TL Yarn Crafts all weekend long, except when my mom made me that epic grilled cheese sandwich. It was so good. Um, so I'm back though and really, really excited to just dive into more things. One of those things is going to be coming your way tomorrow. Um, do you use one skein for your shawls? Most of my shawls are multiple skeins. Like the flat iron is three skeins. The, um, it's back here. It's a little off camera this way, but the serenity shawl used four skeins. I've been thinking about doing a one skein shawl because like, for example, I have this, I don't really have anything to go with this right now. So maybe I'll make like a one skein project. Something like this. Thanks for the idea. I think that might have to happen. And since I'm going to Miami in July, maybe I'll make a shawl in time for Miami. No, I won't. No, I won't. I got too many other ideas. This will hang out. You'll maybe see this again around Christmas. I don't know. Um, so tomorrow, um, well, I've got a few minutes while Alex is getting himself together. Um, love a good one skein project. Okay, well, that's good to know. Maybe I'll start, maybe I'll plan some one skein projects. Um, I was thinking that you could pair it off with another screen. And that was my original plan too. I was thinking about maybe like either putting a cream with it or maybe trying to pull out this, 
um, coral color a little bit more and pair something with that. But maybe I'll just leave it by itself because it is gorgeous and it, it totally should like couldn't stand on its own. Um, so throw up some hearts. If you are a fan of Tunisian crochet, I wish I could throw up some hearts literally right this second because I love it. I love it. Um, so I love Tunisian crochet. I am a huge fan. Let me show you like my absolute favorite Tunisian crochet hook. So this was custom made for me. I don't remember what the wood is called, but it is like the smoothest, most beautiful. Like it looks like a piece of chocolate. Look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. So this was made by ADZE Woodcraft. His name is Scott. Um, first type of crochet you learn. Oh, that's exciting. I'll pull out the corner. It'll look fabulous. I'm like, Amy, I know it would. My mother taught me when I was eight. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Have, have you guys tried Tunisian crochet before? Let me know your stories. Um, you know, I, oh gosh, you know, I know you do nearly girl. Um, yes. If you don't know Tunisian already, you need to be subscribed to my YouTube channel, Tunisian Out the Wazoo. And that wasn't even on purpose. I originally made the channel to do like my Tunisian intro and then launch into other crochet projects. But like, I've just been stuck on Tunisian with my YouTube channel. So I have like tutorials and stuff up there. There are going to be three brand new tutorials on my YouTube channel tomorrow to coincide with the projects that I've been hinting at since Friday. Now, y'all know I love you. And usually in my lives, because you guys are so special to hang out with me, I will usually um, like just put like I'll usually tell you, but I'm not going to tell you. I want it to be a surprise for you also. Uh, it's on my list to learn. Awesome. I love it. Took a class at my local yarn store and loved it. Just started today. It was so fun. Ooh, ooh. That makes me excited. I have Tunisian crochet hooks in my Amazon cart. Buy them. Buy them. Get them. You need them. Because I have three patterns to coincide with those three YouTube tutorials coming out tomorrow. So they will be paid patterns, but the tutorials, of course, are going to be free. Um, so if you see the patterns and you're like, oh, I can just make that, you should. Still tag me. That'd be cool. And if you still want to buy the patterns because you love me, that would be great. Girl, gotta keep the lights on. I have like four lights on right now because it gets weirdly dark around this time of year. It's like been raining, just gross. I wanna make a Tunis Tunisian washcloth so your waffle diamond stitch on your videos. Oh, exciting. Okay, cool. So the YouTube channel is TL Yarn Crafts TV, but I just wanted to show you these because I know Alex is here and we're about to go on together. Um, but I wanted to show you these yarns really quick. If you guys are not familiar with Burnett Maker yarns, I wanted to show you these because these are what I use for the patterns that are coming out tomorrow. I'm coming, Alex. I'm coming. I just want to show this off really quick. Um, so Burnett Maker yarn, it looks like this. Um, it's a bulky weight yarn and it is cotton and nylon. Yes, cotton and nylon. So this is the fashion version of Burnett Maker. So it's small, 126 yard balls. And then um, there are bigger ones that are like 317 yards. So go pick those, pick up some of those. I think they have them at Michael's or you can get them online from yarnspirations.com. Um, but you're going to need those for the patterns that come out tomorrow. I'll be working on that like all night because I still need to write the patterns. I need to edit the, t t the t t t tutorials. <laughs> I'm just so excited. I just, I don't even know what to do. I can't even talk with words. You guys are going to be excited to see these. I was going to put up another sneak peek um, photo today, but I'll just, I'll save it for like next week or something. But anyways, without further ado, let's bring on our guests for the evening. Hold on. View. Go live. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Come on, Alex. I said, without further ado, without further ado. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, apparently with further ado, but yeah. So, oh, hey! <laughs> oh my God. How are you? You all right? I'm good. <laughs> you, you need to get some water. You need to I cool off some. a little I bit. Got some. Oh my gosh. I, had about I was teaching water. a class right right I was going to school. So I was just like running up and down. Manhattan, but I'm home. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us and for and for risking life and limb to <laughs> to get on live. I appreciate it so much. I think everybody is like super duper excited to have you with us tonight. Is, yes, drink up, stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> somebody is really excited to see you. Um, so, yeah. So, Hi, Gwen. so yeah, it's so super excited. So I'm gonna do like a quick little little intro about like how we met and stuff okay. so i know we were like chatting on instagram 
it must have been like years ago. Yeah. Because you offered yarn support for like one of my earliest, earliest designs, that gorgeous orange ombre cake. Oh, and you made a cow something. out of it. And I made a cow out of it and I wore the wrap out of it and I still do. It's sitting, it's packed up now. I've packed up all of my winter stuff, just hoping and praying it doesn't get cold again. But I will be pulling that out um, next time it gets cold. So that was like, we first, first met like yes. online. Um, but then of course, first time in person back in January, January. Yes, I at BKO. Oh, gosh, I'm so excited. And I remember like, in all honesty, the first thing that I remember feeling is like, oh, he's tall like me. <laughs> Cause that whole day I'd been meeting people and I was like, oh, they're so tiny. No, like, like you're uh, putting their armpit, your armpit around their head or something. It's weird. See, my issue is always like, I feel like everybody gets a face full of boob from me and it's like really uncomfortable and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's like, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I can't help it. Um, but that was great. So that was, so that was really cool. So thanks so much for, um, for being on tonight. And of course, like I said, it's, it's, it's an ask me anything. Um, so we're going to start out with just a few questions for you to let the people who don't know you already, which I'm sure is like five people, um, <laughs> get to know you a little bit better. Um, uh, so first off, you know, of course, tell us a little bit about you and kind of how you got into fiber and like what your life looks like right now. Um, so I'm, I'm born and raised in New York. I'm from Harlem, Dominican and Puerto Rican parents. Um, when I was like 10 to like 13, I wanted to be a pastry chef and I went to Michael's and took all of their pastry, uh, okay. cake decorating classes, like yeah. all of them. That's exciting. It was amazing. I was under yeah. age. So my mother had to come with me and I was also the oh. only guy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yes, I but I took it. all their classes, and then I took it twice, because they, like, at the end, after I finished my class, they, like, revamped their whole course. Yeah. Um. So I took it twice, but I was always at Michael's. Mm -hmm. A cousin of mine was like, can you go grab me some yarn in a hook set from Michael's? Um, I want to learn how to crochet, or I want to pick up crochet again. I'm like, okay, sure. Why do you want to pick that up, weirdo? Whatever. Sure. Why crochet? Ew. I, I'm like, ew, what? <laughs> what's wrong with you? Come, they can read some cakes with me. But no, so I picked it up. She never, she never picked them up. I bought it. She never picked them up. I had the yarn here. I'm like, you know what? Let me try this out. Mm -hmm. Let me try this out. Mm -hmm. I, was mm -hmm. I was on YouTube. I found a crochet amigurumi tutorial. Uh -huh. And that was the oh, first wow. project I made. Really? Yeah. I did I not like know how to do foundation. It was hard for a first project. It was a cupcake. So I was like, I have oh, to make it. Yeah. Adorable. I'm like, I love pastry. it. Pastry. I have to make like, it. Like melding them together. Yeah. That's perfect. So, uh, then so how I long ago up, was that? Um, I'll be 22 now in September. Oh, and I, was, I did it when I was 13. You're a baby. Oh. <laughs> I oh. picked it up when I was 13. So that's seven, uh, eight, nine years. Nine years? Wow. It's amazing. Gosh. Right? The time flies. It's like, yes. I don't, I don't even get it. Okay. That's awesome. And then I picked so, up the rest. Like, I picked up knitting off YouTube, spinning. Mm -hmm. Uh, spinning off YouTube and books, and then I, when I worked at Lion Brand for two years at the studio, I picked up machine knitting, needle felting, mm. wet felting, all of that on the floor as a sales associate. Oh my gosh! So you like played with everything when it comes. I to know the work. basics of pretty much everything, but I really love spinning. I really love crocheting, and I really love dyeing yarn. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So, okay, so since you have played with just like everything when it comes to fiber, how did you decide that your business was going to primarily be dying? Like, how did you get there? Um, I, at the beginning, I feel like what I was trying to do was just be a designer. Mm -hmm. And then I was seeing all the knitwear or all the knitting designers that they're doing these amazing things with hand dyed yarn. Yes. But yeah. I'm like, why isn't anyone doing this with crochet? So that's where it kind of evolved. So I was like, I was playing around dyeing yarns. That was something I picked up and I already had a whole stash of hand dyed yarn. Yeah. And it just grew from there. The ombre yarn itself like really picked up and mm -hmm. that's what, so I've been building on top of that. But it wasn't initially, okay. I felt like I wanted to be a crochet designer. Yeah? Yeah. So you should I'm come just, back, come back. I'm North trying, I'm trying. I have my hypnotic <laughs> eye and I have a couple other, I have a sketchbook full of designs. Oh just my gosh, don't we all? Oh, I love it. Okay, well, now I'm excited because, like, I need an excuse to crochet something that I didn't come up with. So I'll be waiting for your next design. All right. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> um, so tell us some of the perks of running your own business. Like, what do you love the most about what you do right now? So um, it became full-time last year in March. Uh, no, mm -hmm. July. 
Okay. Um, and Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and um, and I just got a studio in January after Vogue Knitting. Nice. So, but so so, the perks, right? It's like you you yeah. make your own schedule. Yeah. Yep. But that's also a con because yes, you make your own schedule. Because <laughs> you have to be like super motivated to do that on your own. Yes. And yeah. um, like money, you have to make sure you you're, you're meeting your quotas every week, meeting your quotas every month, yep. whatever, whatever, <laughs> however, 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 yep. whatever is the system you set up. Uh -huh. um, but it's also great because if you're diversifying your income, you're also spreading yourself out and like really building your strengths on each That's like true. platform or whatever it is that you're doing. So yeah. That's true. And it gets you so much exposure to like just the, the different kinds of people that you get to work with when you're, when you spread your, your skills out, like you get to, you know, maybe play with the design side and the dying side. Mm -hmm. and, like, you know, even the teaching side, because I saw that you just started a YouTube channel. Yes, I've had okay. it for a minute, and I just haven't posted anything. I have two now. I have one for vlogging, and the one I just posted yesterday is going to be for art. So it's going to be tutorials and, like, FO okay. videos and all of that. But, yeah. Awesome. So what kind of videos can we expect from your YouTube channel? FO videos. Tomorrow, I'm going to, I go to school full-time for um, ceramics. So tomorrow okay. is my ceramics. It's, it's my ceramic Wednesday. That's what I call mm -hmm. it. Love 8 it. I love 4 it. 4 p.m. Just ceramics all day. So I'll be recording. Yeah. Um, we have a talk tomorrow with an artist, so I'm gonna be recording that, and I'll be. I'll hopefully have time to throw some things on the Potter's wheel, and I want to record that also. Oh, that's so yeah. exciting! Oh, I can't wait to see it. I feel like as like I've never tried pottery myself. I've always like gone to like the little paint parties, and you can paint it, mm -hmm. but I've never actually made it myself. Um, so like when I watch the videos, I'm like mesmerized like that's I so absolutely satisfying and so like oh. hypnotizing it's amazing mesmerizing yeah. all that oh I love it awesome um so kind of going back to the previous question what do you feel is like the hardest thing right now that you have to deal with with being like your own boss time management and just mm -hmm. staying on top of everything because I have I go to school and I run a business so it's like I have to oh if I, if I have a deadline for this commission I need to make sure I have that done but yeah. What if I had a midterm that week? Yeah. Which, that, I, I had a midterm last week, so I had a midterm last week. Priorities. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I had a midterm last week, and I was getting ready for a trunk show that same oh weekend. God. So I had to make sure I had enough inventory. I had to make sure I read the book to pass the class mm. and also keep up on Instagram to keep sales and traffic to my website and everything else. Yeah. So it's, it's like just everything like time is management. a top priority. Yeah, and I'm just one person. Just one person. I, I was just going to ask if you have like, <laughs> any help in your business. Um, I've just started to, like, kind of push my sister into helping me. So okay. she, <laughs> so like, she helps me out at shows. She hates it, but she yeah. loves it. Um, <laughs> she hates I remember, like, her, I remember seeing loves her you. at Vogue Knitting, so and I was happy. like, <laughs> I saw her at Vogue Knitting, and I was like, um, can I have some help? She's like buried in her phone. She was so sweet though. She was like super nice though. Once I once I got her attention, mm -hmm. but you can tell <laughs> she's like, I don't want to be here. It's all Alex. <laughs> When they go to her asking her yeah. questions, like, I don't knit or crochet, ask my brother. I'm like, yep, that's me. Hi, how can I help you? Right, right. But yeah, so I'm trying to help. I'm trying to push her. So she's doing, she's been doing my labeling and she's doing my um, sending packages. Okay. To, um, nice. Sending orders out. Yeah. Well, that helps. That's awesome. Okay. So what are your big plans for 2018? I know you said that you might want to be getting back into designing and you've got your YouTube thing popping now. So like, what are your, what are the next few months look like for you? The next few months. So right now, I'm tr I'm trying to. F my last trunk show is in two weeks. It's awesome. Mother's Day weekend. Where and at? Between trunk shows until um, it's at a public school, and it's Nitty City is organizing it. So it's um, oh gosh. called Moms and Makers. Mm -hmm. Money is going to end gun violence. I'm forgetting Ooh. the actual thing, but if you go to Nitty City, they have more. They explain it better than m what I'm trying to do right now. Um, <laughs> we'll check it out. <laughs> Um, we'll that's my last one and then I'm starting again once fall so I think it's September is when they're starting again um, okay. so by then I'm just I'm trying to focus on yarn bombs because I also yarn bomb and I love using yes. crochet as um, as craft craft craftivism right like mm -hmm. a message mm -hmm. out and showing that yarn bombs and street art really like it's you need tech you need to know technique and have skills to do it it's yeah. not just like spitting out and like putting crappy stuff on fences um have yeah. a good message out there's right? more to it <laughs> yeah there's Way more, more to, to it. it 
take some take some time to do it. So that's why I, I want to. Now that it's colder, I mean, now that it's warmer, warmer. I can mm -hmm. go out yarn bomb and not yes. freeze my fingertips. Right. Because <laughs> so, yeah, that so is be, work. So where do you get the inspiration for your yarn bombs from? Where does that come from? So I follow a bunch of other um, activist type accounts on Instagram, and I literally mm -hmm. just have a bunch of. Um, saved collection you know how you could save yeah. your yeah, yeah you have a bunch of those saved and i mm -hmm. every time i see another movement going and i see their artwork or someone else's but i take it i'm like i love it i want to i'll save that for later and right. i just sketch out things that inspire me after that and i love it like the sketch itself leads to, to something but when you're actually crocheting it turns into something else like it's never you know yeah. really played it oh my gosh so true it's like you'll start with like one idea and then it morphs into like 20 other things so quickly so quickly. I don't know if that I happens for knitters, but I know it happens for crocheters a lot. Like, oh, you'll I'm have sure one I'm idea sure and then it's like a million different things. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so, like, when do you expect your first yarn bombs to go up this season? Um, so, I want to get one up by the end of May. I already have my contributions were sent in. Now I need to do my part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. But it's pretty, it's, I, I picked pretty simple tasks. They were doing all the small pieces. I just need to assemble it and put it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So we just had somebody say, what is a yarn bomb? Do you want to explain that to the people? Yes. Yeah. So a yarn bomb is a form of street art. It's either knitted or crocheted or just wrapped up in yarn and you just put it up outside. Like it's, it comes from um, graffiti artists. They, mm -hmm. when, when they tag something, it's called they, like they bombed it. So it's just a hybrid of that. So yarn bomb. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Somebody said, did you just stand at a fence and crochet for hours? <laughs> I should stay at a fence and crochet for hours. <laughs> is that, well, is that how you do it? Oh, like, do you make I your guess. pieces okay. ahead of time or? Yeah, I do it ahead of time. And then I go and sew it onto the fence or use um, zip ties or throw it onto a tree, Very onto cool. a bike rack. We'll have to get that up on your YouTube. I would love to see what that looks like for you. Because I feel like you posted some videos or some photos of it last year when you were putting your bombs up, but I haven't seen anything recently. Yes, so yes, I did. The pineapple. Yes, the pineapple. And I know you posted the photos. I, I think, did you do an ice cream cone? I did. And now yes. I've got my studio has my, on my door. Oh, but yeah, so we're gonna, yes. I love it's a, it. a, a rainbow drippy ice cream cone. Yes, I remember that. I remember, I was like, oh, I love it. Um. Okay, cool. So, Next up, tell us if you have any advice, anything to impart to the people, anyone who's like a maker, maybe interested in getting into their own business or, you know, looking to move to the next level. What's maybe some pieces of advice you can pass on? Oh, um, it would be to for, like diversify your income, diversify your platform that you're available on. That's so super, important. super important. Um, also, really try and narrow down what you like. Mm -hmm. Then try not to be as spread out as I am, because then <laughs> <laughs> don't do what I do, because <laughs> then you just go crazy and it's like you want to try all the different. But just like focus down, settle down, and see what you like. Hi, Miss for Lie. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So Ellen said, "Did you go back and take them down, or do they stay up uh, as long as people don't mess with them?" Your yarn bombs. Um, I take. There's one. Um, Celia Cruz. She's a Cuban singer. She's like one of the first Afro Latinas that got Grammys and all that stuff. Anyway, but I have her up. She's been up for maybe three years, and I take them down, oh, wash wow. them, put them up. Okay. Um, but I'm taking her down, and she's she's being retired. She's it's getting dulled. Gotcha. I've had before. I did the yarn bomb, the ice cream you saw. I had mm -hmm. that one is maybe four feet tall. Mm -hmm. I made one that was twelve feet. Oh my gosh! I needed four people to put it up. And yeah. but that one, that one, that one got burnt down. That maybe like two weeks later. How? Someone just lit it on fire. So oh it my god, that's so yeah. mean. It's ridiculous. But that what was, one, that was the only people? time that it's happened. The rest really? of them they just they stay up. I've had. <laughs> I moved. I killed a tree. Like I almost killed a tree. Oh no! How? It's How still there. You I crochet killed a tree. <laughs> it was knitted. It was knitted. It was machine. Oh, okay, knitted. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's right. It's fine. It's whatever. <laughs> It was machine knit, and I think because it was a young tree, and the machine, like since it was machine knit, it was so such a dense fabric around the tree, it kind of almost like suffocated for that growth. Mm -hmm. So it didn't put mm -hmm. um, leaves out in spring last year. I took that yarn bomb down, washed it, shortened it, and I put it on another tree. So it's yeah. so, like, you just reuse it. It's amazing, nice. as long as no one like burns it. But yeah, as long as nobody's a total jerk. 
Or steals that. it, or steals it. I've had, I made, um, for the Supreme, Supreme Court um, ruling for same-sex marriages, I put up a love win um, heart. Yeah. And it was taken down the next day. Like, someone took it. That's messed up. It's fine. I took the oh picture gosh. of it. It's on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's on Instagram. It lives forever. Yes. I love it. Um, so going back to the advice that you gave, like, on the one hand, you said, you know, make sure you diversify your streams. And on the other hand, you said, like, be judicious, sounds like, on how you're diversifying. So any um, any suggestions on how somebody can make a good choice on, like, how they kind of spread their talents out? See what's real, see what the market needs, right? Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you can fulfill that need, go ahead and try it out. If it doesn't work, put it on pause, put it on the back burner and do something else that's getting picked, that's picking up momentum somewhere else, possibly, or right. just try something else that's on that on your list. Make a list of things you want to try out. Um, for the social, like I said, diversify, like Facebook is a mm -hmm. platform I have, but I yeah. can't stand it, so I don't use it. I hate, I, I hate Facebook. Yeah. I've been like half considering even taking down my personal Facebook because I'm like, I just can't. But the thing, like like, Facebook and Instagram are connected. So if you were to like disconnect Facebook, yeah, you lose, lose some, it. some like this makes no, I hate, I can't stand it, but yeah. yeah. So I just have it for Instagram. I feel, I just feel like Facebook has gotten so cluttered over the years. Yes. It's like, it's confused with like what it wants to be as a platform and what it's trying to accomplish. Like it's getting so bogged down in trying to make money at this point that like people who are actually like using it people are using it for their business and then for personal and like making connections and then also running ads. It's like, there's just too much going on. Like, just keep it simple. Yes. Simple and easy. Um, so yeah. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and open up the floor. It is yes. ask me anything time. Um, I haven't gotten any questions. I, I have, I'll be honest, I wasn't like super duper paying attention. I'm going to scroll through the comments real quick. I'm doing the same. same. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't said anything? I don't think so. I think we'll be laughing your personal dyed yarn when you're yarn no i use commercial acrylic when i'm um, yarn bombing hand dyed yarn is too precious like it's, it's too too much of a luxury thing to just put up outside and risk getting lost or burnt or whatever like no yeah. acrylic and cotton yarn goes outside nice that makes a lot of sense do you have a preference between acrylic or cotton when you're doing your yarn bombs i like smooth yarn that's bright mm -hmm. i have a lot of homespun from lion brand mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. textured but for my, my ideas, I'll just work those up really loosely so I can, so the texture isn't lost or so it's not also confusing. Sure. But I, I, I tend to go to smoother yarns. I use lots of worsted weight and double it. Because mm. like, there's more of a color range in worsted weight than there is, ah, than there is <laughs> <in provoking. laughs> than there Are is you dancing or something? We lost. I'm dancing, yeah. <laughs> um, I love it. That's another question. Another question. Um, so some, so we got a question. What are our astrological Ooh. signs? So I'm a Gemini that leans towards cancer. Oh, I'm a Virgo, September 12. I'm not sure where that falls on the mm. thing. I, so there were these really fun, um, like astrological sign quizzes going around in stories over the weekends. So my friend who was born in July, my absolute best friend, she's a cancer. And then I did the one for Gemini and I'm like, three quarters of the stuff has nothing to do with me and I should have been born in July. So like, I feel like I'm on like this weird line right in between. I don't know. I'm in between too, because I think it ends August or yeah. starts in August, end of August, and then it ends middle of September. So I'm like kind of in the middle also. For me, exactly. people like, Virgo is supposed to be very organized and put together. People say that about me. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, a hot, I'm the hottest of hot messes. <laughs> Like so I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know what Alex you're talking about, but it's not this one. It's not this one. I love it. I love it. Like, I think one of mine was like a born performer. Like, I definitely, I think I'm a social person, but I'm not a performer. Like, I don't like to be on stage, like super center of attention, but say la vie. So Same. Gemini and Virgo. And Virgo. Um, so we got a question. What is your handle and business name? Somebody wants to be able to check you out. So I'm Alex Crates on pretty much everything except Ravelry. I'm Stitch Counting on Ravelry. Stitch Counting? Yes, Stitch Counting. Fabulous, fabulous. I love it. So it's Alex um, Crates on everything. So we got a question. When you say diversify, do you mean different platforms or something else? And do you mean different kinds of projects? Can you give us an example? So I mean different platforms, especially. Like for me, Instagram is huge. YouTube, mm -hmm. like even though I've just started making... Um, 
YouTube videos, I get lots of traffic from them. And yes. I've been on like Christy Glass's videos. I've been on um, T with Shira, um, maybe something else that I've missed, but like those generate income, generate traffic to my website. Um, mm -hmm. But for different, like for like, I dye yarn and I design, right? Yeah. Those two things generate attention and income and all that, <laughs> that helps me spread the name out. But yeah. yarn bombs also help. And it's just two things. Like if, so if they help you spread your name out, you should mm -hmm. add it. But also if you, it helps you grow creatively, which yeah. for, me, for me is important. If it helps you grow creatively, add it. If it's taken away from you creatively and mentally, don't. Like stop don't that and that soon. Cut it right off. Cut yeah. it right off. And I think sometimes we as creatives, we get stuck in this like, okay, maybe I'll try this thing and it'll work out and we'll see. It's like, you know in your gut whether or not something is mm -hmm. going to be for you. And you don't want to end up, especially in a partnership where you've committed to something within a project and you're like, yeah. my heart is just not in it. Because it, it ends up showing in your work. It'll mm -hmm. definitely show, and people will know. And I think the other point that I wanted to make is, like, as artists, there's so many different forms of currency for us. So, like, as artists who also own business. So, of course, there's, like, hard money income. There is exposure. And then I think there's also, like, that that energy that you get from being creative. So you want to spread your you want to spread yourself out to get exposure, make money, and continue to be inspired. Exactly. But there's only 24 hours in a day and you're one mm -hmm. person and, and you can only have so many cups of coffee, like some stuff you're going to have to say no to, which I think is really hard for some people. Not it's me so much anymore. It's so hard. It's so but, hard. But I, exactly. I've learned how to be selective with yarn stores. Yep. So if you haven't put an order in forever and you want me to lower my price, I'm going to cut you off. If I've heard things that you're racist or treat people horrible. Okay. You're not going to be my stockist. Like, sorry, not sorry. My mm -hmm. customers, like, it just, it won't work out. So I've learned, I'm learning how to be more selective with that and trunk shows and all that. Yeah. Makes sense. That's awesome. I love it. Okay. So we had a question from Daisy Stitchco. She said, what is your opinion on doing giveaways to promote your business? Mm. That's mm. a hard one. Oh, gosh. What do you think? I did them a lot when I was first starting off. And it wouldn't generate much followers, much traffic, much income. Mm. Um, I feel like it was just word of mouth that really yeah. helped my business grow. Like you'll gain followers and most of them will leave within a week because they didn't win. Yep. Stuff like that happens. So yeah. you have to like, you, I like to do collaborative giveaways. Those tend to be better because there's lots more people involved and more audience and more people seeing it um, yeah. you get more exposure that way mm -hmm. but um, I'm stepping back from that because exposure doesn't pay the bills exactly oh my gosh please say it again it just doesn't. <laughs> exposure doesn't pay the bills it's like once you get to a certain point as an entrepreneur I mean like you have a studio that you have to keep open I've quit my day job and mm -hmm. somebody got to pay the light bill so right. it's like I, I can't just do things for exposure anymore. And I think one thing that we also have to consider is like, we have to pay into a giveaway. Like there is something, some part of our product that we're giving up that we're no longer making money off of because we've now given it away. So it is really great for exposure. Um, but I think you have to have a balance. Like if you're doing a giveaway like every month, mm -mm. you might want to reassess. Yeah. <laughs> it might not be a really great idea. Um, I will say, at least in my business, since most of my product is digital, it's a lot easier for me to do a giveaway. And typically, like you said, I'll, I'll do something collaborative. So I might like team up with the yarn company and they provide the yarn and I'll provide the pattern or something like that. That makes sense. But like, I'm not over here like giving away mugs because those things are expensive. It costs like $8 mm -hmm. to ship a mug. I don't know that. And I ain't, I ain't doing it. No. Um, so that's just another one of those situations where I get real comfortable saying, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, said uh okay so we got a question from one of the kate she said was just making sure that stuff was wasted and burned i'm not sure what that means um <laughs> oh crochet luna says alex thanks so much for the help with the hypnotic eye she says she's loving it um, and oh let me say something about this because she yeah. I, I made that i made that tutorial mm -hmm. and I, it was been on the back of my mind because it was a stitch that i pretty much like the joining stitch that i pretty much came up with i couldn't find it anywhere else yeah um and when i was watching your live with katie 
and you were like, if you're going to post a video onto your, if you're going to link a video onto your pattern, make sure it's yours. And I'm like, yeah. why not? Yeah. Why, why have I not? Like the life up is like, yeah. gotta do it. Gotta do it. And then Crochet Luna text or DM me and I'm like, I need to do this. I just sat you down. You gotta and do it. it. Oh my yeah. gosh. And you know what? Honestly, that's something that didn't even click for me until like last year. So I started my YouTube channel last March um, because I wanted to come out with a Tunisian crochet pattern. And like, I was finding videos and I was like, these are not good. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like, you know, let me just make my own. And then I was like, wow, so I can make a video and then link into my pattern or make a pattern and link into my video. Mm -hmm. And you just have like that, that kind of like circular. The funnel. The funnel. You, you, seriously. The right. There yes. is a word for it. So you yes. have this funnel and you're directing people exactly where you want them to go. Because what I didn't want to happen is me link to somebody else's video and then they have their own patterns and they're like, well, I'll just go buy my Tunisian patterns from that person. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you get them from no. Yes, from that's right. <laughs> Which makes a lot of sense. Um, somebody Crochet said, I love Gemini too. And my besties are Gemini. Love it. Alex, how do you, how do we find you on Instagram and YouTube? Um, so are Alex, Alex Grace. Grace on both? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, let me see. So that counts as performing. Yeah. Okay. Why did you cut your hair? Hi, Yvonne. Um, why I cut my hair? Because I'm bald. I'm balding. It's genetic. So let's just, let's just speed the process up and move on. <laughs> Like it's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. Um, makes it crazy. My husband says he's jealous that I'm talking to you, and I told him to cut it out. Um, <laughs> he's the best. So you know what? So what he does is like he'll jump in and out of the lives and like drop some random little comments to be super distracting, and then he leaves. He's probably not even in here right now. Oh, um, I see. Yeah. Wait, who's this guy? I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so how to spin yarn says, what is your current favorite part of your art? Is it dyeing, spinning, knitting? Oh, hi, Switching Ashley. Over. She's a huge <laughs> inspirational spinner for me. Um, uh -huh. My favorite, it, it has to be hand spinning because it's... yeah. I was watching, I watch um, Bob Ross going to sleep sometimes. Yeah. And he just like paint stuff. It's like, oh, let's just put a tree here. Let's just make a mountain here. You see this? Just tap it like that. Like, that's how I feel when I'm spinning yarn. Like, mm -hmm. I just grab all the colors I want, lay them out. And I'm like, all right, so I'm feeling like spinning some sheep locks. I'm feeling like spinning plain old mohair right now or mm -hmm. um, pure Angelina. So I just grab from here. And I'm thinking about either like a woven scarf or a garment itself as like, sure. Uh, how, as I'm playing the yarn. So spinning is really what I enjoy, but it like takes like a more sophisticated crafter to buy it. Like, sure. You have, to, you yeah. have to think about... You have to really appreciate it. Yeah. The whole so, art of it. And it's a tricky yarn. Like it's not always consistent. So you have to know how to really use it. So it's it's a hard thing to sell sometimes. Yeah. So it's more fun to actually do, but not so much to sell. Yeah. It doesn't sell. Like, Makes yeah. Sense. Yes. Awesome. So Crochet for the Soul said, what's a trunk show? So a trunk show is um, you go into a yarn store or a craft store, or a store period, you go sell your product, an artist goes sells their product, and um, the store takes a part, takes a commission, right? Percentage? Is it a, a percentage of the sales. Mm -hmm. A percentage of the yeah. sales. A commission is something else, yes. Yeah. They take a percentage of your sales for that day or that week. But right. um, the artist is getting exposure and sales that whole week that whole day so it's um a good thing i i'm trying to cut back on that also because mm -hmm. being in new york city all these stores want a very high percentage oh really um, yeah so i just did one this weekend and she only wanted 20 percent. nice nice other ones want 40 percent. oh my girl that's a huge chunk. that is a lot yeah, so for all the work to, to be that you have to put into awesome. it ahead of time exactly. and like prep and everything. Oof. Like, I um, two weeks of dying yarn. So much. Oh my gosh, so much. So when you do your trunk shows, do you do any other any other activities like um like classes or demos or anything like that at your trunk shows? Um I've done a class, a spinning class at one of my trunk shows. But for the most part I just show up and sell mm -hmm. yarn, help them pick patterns and that's it. Nice. I love yeah. it. Perfect. Um, so we got a question. He said, what is your biggest creative goal for 2018? My biggest creative goal for this year? Mm. Mm. That's hard. Mm. That's a hard question. Oh, my gosh. How do we have, like, a biggest goal? It's like they're all here. I don't know. I feel like at the beginning of this year would have been, like, to, to design more. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm back in my ceramics classes, it's just, like, to be a better potter. Like, I want to really... Sure. 
strengthen that skill and just become really good. Because like, I've always wanted to do it. And I went to a school that I, w I went to the school accidentally. And I was like, oh, I could just be I could study this now. Like, this is an option. Yeah. So yeah. I took it. But yeah, I didn't even know that. I don't I, I don't even know that at that age, I would have known that that was an option. It's like I didn't know. I didn't know either. But when I went there, I just like the there's a studio up here on the Upper West Side in Harlem of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. um, and the owner now, who she was just a partner a couple years ago, but she went to that same school. So yeah. I was following them, but we connected because we went to the same school. Mm -hmm. So nice. that's that, that's like that's a that's a connection I've made just going through that school. And she's Fantastic. amazing. Yeah. So. Like once you once you graduate or even as you're going through it, like what are you hoping to do with that degree, with that education? Don't know. So I got no idea. Like I, my 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 idea right now would be to integrate it into Alex Creates to okay. sell pot, uh, sell yarn bowls and mugs and that. Um, but if also, you ever if you sell mugs, it, I think you already know that I need one. I know for my um, if they're happening, gems. it's gonna happen. Just it, it takes like a whole month to get things done. Nice. the whole process but it's, it's happening i've thrown a couple it's happening. i love it i love it awesome okay so um we got a question from crocheting lefty she said what yeah. type of lighting do you use for your youtube channel for me um i have my studio is amazing i have two walls of windows and it's on the second mm -hmm. floor so i get nice natural mm -hmm. lighting and i have nice mm -hmm. wide overhead lighting so that's all I use. Before I had um, photography lightings in my in my um, in my living room. That's awesome. what I used to do. So lucky. So I'm in a I'm in a townhouse. So I have a neighbor on one side and like a brick wall on the other side. So I just have two windows on the same wall in my studio. So I just try to film during the daytime when it's nice <laughs> enough. Like I had to film today, which it's been like rainy and dreary and gross like all day. It's awful. Um, but I do have a couple of umbrella lights that I use. And um, I have like a desk lamp with a daylight bulb in it, which works a lot. That's actually what I have on right now. So like, instead of like super yellow light, it's a little bit more white. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't like make the colors look weird. Do you have good. an art light too? Like I don't. I've been thinking about getting one because I know like you can use your coupon for them at Joanne's or something. So I was thinking about going there and getting one just to just so I can better control the direction because that's mm -hmm. the issue that I have with my lights right now is like I can set up my umbrella lamps like I've got one up right now but it's so big it's like yes. hard to get it exactly where I need it because I still have furniture in here like I still live in this space that's I can't saying. rearrange that's my room house. every single time I know like I don't I don't have like a specific recording studio space to just be able to move stuff around so, so it's just about working with what you have I think the mm -hmm. one thing that I've learned with being on YouTube is there is no wrong way <laughs> to do this. Like if you get it done as best as you can with whatever you have and just get the content out there, like you'll grow and learn over time. Yeah. My first YouTube videos were like, I don't even think I used any lighting. I don't even think I had an actual microphone at the time. Like they sound terrible, but those are some of my so most successful videos because the content's great. Was, yeah. Um, so that's, that's really what makes a difference. So I think some people get like caught up with like doing it, perfectly from the very beginning and it's like yes. that's how you just don't start because you're always wondering if you did it right just just start just start it out. just so, put the content out and you can always change it after you can always change um she said when you when are you spinning more of the amazing mambos what is that um that's my specific it's like my it's my art yarn it's kind of okay it's specific to me but i it incorporates texture of uh, sheep curls of uh, sparkle so there's lots of change of texture and type mm -hmm. of yarn it's all a single ply yarn oh and it's i love crazy it. fun yeah are you planning to make more of those i'm always making more of it always. but I, i'm trying to i'm gonna i'm just right now i'm hoarding them and just making i want to make a big um update with them nice. instead yeah. of just having like sporadically updating to my shop just do one big update and like move on and do more yeah. Oh, so I always have that question. I think we've got like five minutes. Oh my gosh, the time like flies. Oh. Um, so, um, God, where'd my question go? I lost it. Okay, I'll get back into this. Um, so, how to spin yarn again says, um, what is something new that you want to learn? Hmm. It's like, what don't you know how to do? Already? I really, <laughs> I really want to weaving. Weaving is something like I know the basics. But yep. there's so much to it 
-hmm. that I don't know that I would love to. And actually, one of my customers is here, and he's a weaver, and he buys lots of my mambo yarns. But I would love to make something that's woven, like just make an actual mm -hmm. project. That's something I really want to try out. Amazing. Awesome. Um, so my mom said, how amazing was it to open your own studio? It was, it felt amazing. But the moment I signed the lease, paid, I'm like, crap, this is real. Yeah, like you're in it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this, like this is real. <laughs> There's no backing out. <laughs> so how, so you've had your studio since January. How's that experience been so far? It's like walking backwards. It's yeah. weird. It's, I, the first couple months, I was like, I had nothing to do in my house. I have to go to the studio. So like I would right. wake up, I would usually wake up and spin for a couple hours and then go do computer stuff or whatever. Yeah. I would wake up. I'm like, I don't have any yarn. I have no hooks here. So I had to like, tr like, like you have to stuff. go to work. Yeah. I'm like, I have to go to work. This is yeah. real. <laughs> so now like, I have, I have a spinning wheel here and I have a knitting set here and I have some yarn here. So I have projects here at home and then I have mm -hmm. everything else in the studio. So I still can create here if I don't want to go home, uh, if, I, if I don't want to go to the studio. Nice. Um, there was another question. I'm going to see how many more we can get in. What are your thoughts on dyeing cotton? How do you feel about dyeing cotton? Um, it's amazing. I love plant fibers. They're just, it's a whole different world to learn. Um, they take up a lot more dyes and they, you need to cure it for like 48 hours. I'm dyeing bamboo and it's the same dyes, but bamboo is a little softer. So I like that. What's the weight on that? Like, what's the, is that like? Um, BK weight. Ooh, that sounds <laughs> fun. Mm -hmm. I just played around with like a bamboo cotton blend because I, I haven't found a cotton yarn that I'm like super in love with. I just don't like how it feels Same. Um, to crochet with. Um, so like I just worked with a cotton bamboo blend that I just absolutely loved. Oh my gosh, it was so nice. It's the bamboo. Uh, it just makes it feel so luxurious and amazing and soft yeah. and butter. It's butter. It's butter. It's amazing. Um, I have a really fun pattern coming out with that later this summer. And I'm like, I think people are going to like this. I think they're going to like it. Um, so we've got like three minutes left. So I'm going to open the floor to you, Alex, if you have anything that you want to promote, anything that you want to mention that we haven't asked you about already. Of course, again, let us know where to find you online. But go ahead and, and shout yourself out. All right. So make sure to visit AlexCreates.us for my website. And yes, yarn bowls are in the future. Um, <laughs> I'm Alex Creates on Instagram and Yes, Alex Creates everywhere. Alex Creates everywhere. Well, thank you yes. so much for joining me. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, and for anyone who is catching this on the replay or even for anybody who doesn't happen to catch it, I finally found a way to pull my Instagram lives down from Instagram and post them on YouTube. <laughs> exciting so yeah. um i know right so this is going to be going up on youtube and i'm going to try and keep up with that every week because i was i kept getting to the point where i'm like this is really good stuff like i need this to live somewhere um so we finally figured that out so thank you everyone for hanging out with us this will be going up on my youtube channel um and thank you again alex for giving us an hour of your precious time we appreciate it so much thank awesome. you I'll bye, see you later. bye. <laughs>